Thanks to the support as a channel member, Russ Eddy. I feel like you need a, a warning at the start of this video that this could be this could be like a horror movie. We've started losing matches. Players have started getting injured. Obviously, Fowry's injured again. And now we have to play Manchester City. Oh, Paris Saint-Germain scored seven goals against us recently as well. City are better than them. Hello and welcome to part 59 of the Tour de France. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we face Manchester City in the Champions League and Strasbourg in Ligue 1. Since you were last with me, uh, we have started to struggle, as mentioned in the intro there. You saw us draw against Villarreal and Saint-Étienne in the last episode. Uh, we then followed that up with a draw at home to Rennes, who are, I think, at Rennes down in the relegation battle. They're certainly in the bottom half of the league. We then went to Paris Saint-Germain and got absolutely spanked 7-1. They ruined us. But weirdly, followed it up by beating AC Milan in the Champions League with a, a slightly rotated team, because by this point, Cyril Fowry, of course, is injured again. He's going to be out for a little while. Um, but that is the team that was able to beat AC Milan and Guayma also injured for that game. And I think still injured now. Uh, we then couldn't beat Mets, who are in a relegation battle, and we lost to Bordeaux, who are... Uh, I mean, they're not in a relegation battle this season, were last year, having been promoted last season. So the league table, I'll be fine with mid-table this year. I'm under no illusions that we should be qualifying back in for the Champions League again. So I'm not alarmed to be down in eighth place. I would like to start moving up the league again, of course. I'd love to be in the Champions League again, but I'm certainly not expecting it. Um, what I am expecting with this big pile of money that we've got is I'll have a bit more money to spend next year to have more of a chance to re-establish us. That money has not started to arrive yet. We hoped it might start to trickle through as the season goes on. But our Champions League group is looking very healthy two games in. We've got four points on the board. We are top of the group. We're almost certainly about to lose to Manchester City. This is a Manchester City team uh, that is, is quite scary, to be honest. There's your Manchester City team. Um, we've got to face Latoro Martinez. Um, we've got Phil Foden bursting out of midfield as well. It's just, it's actually considering, I mean, I guess we are eight years into the save now. It's uh, it's not the most familiar Manchester City team for people who've played a lot of long football manager saves this year. Normally, they stay a little bit more familiar looking until players start to drop off and retire. But I guess maybe we have hit that point because we're far enough in the future anyway. But I think we're going to get battered. Um, especially because we are without two of our key players. And Guayma is going to be out for the next two weeks. He's got a damaged knee cartilage and Cyril Fowry injured again, this time a broken collarbone. He likes to spread the injuries around. It's not It's not that he's got a particular weakness, but this guy is still only 21 years old. And in his career so far, we're just looking at the major injuries. He had a twisted ankle that kept him out for four weeks. He's had sprained knee ligaments that kept him out for four weeks. He's had a broken toe that kept him out for six weeks. A torn calf muscle, three months. A hip injury kept him out for two months. Sprained knee ligaments that kept him out for five weeks. And now the broken collarbone that has so far kept him out for four weeks. That's a lot of major injuries for a 21-year-old. Now, I know some of that is my own fault. I've been playing him regularly since he was sort of 16, 17 years old. He's not... He's not really had a chance to let his bones finish growing. But it is frustrating when he is a key player and we made the decision in the summer to keep him rather than Big Willie. And with Big Willie in the team, maybe we're not so afraid of Manchester City. Maybe we don't concede seven goals against Paris Saint-Germain. All that being said, this is the team for the Manchester City game. We've got Prevo in goal, a back four of Cissé, Alfonso, Matsima and Kambedi. Uh, Frey still injured. He's just sneaking back to fitness now. Then got a midfield of Thomas Richardson and Vaquero. Merlin and Di Girolamo are going to be the two supporting Afkir Omar up front. The one positive point is that Omar is still scoring goals. He's the second top scorer in Ligue 1. Um, he was instrumental in the defeat of AC Milan. So he is. Uh, he seems to be at home at this level. He is pretty comfortable. He wasn't a one-season wonder He's a Champions League player. Meanwhile, I'm having a sneezing fit off camera, so apologies for all of the jump cuts you might have just seen in the run-up to this game. Um, hopefully, hopefully I'm done with it now, but goodness me, if my if my face was gradually getting redder and redder, it's because I just sneezed about 15 times. I mean, hay fever season's supposed to be over now. What is going on? 
Right, it is Manchester City with the first highlight of the match. Pedro Porro in their team. All these years on, he's actually made the breakthrough and made that right back position his own. Sterling with the deep cross, looking for Phil Foden. And there's Zhao Felix to follow up from the initial shot that came back off the post to put them one nil up. I'm not done sneezing. I thought I was and I'm not. Right, there we go. Hopefully that goal gets disallowed because I was too busy trying to hold off a sneeze while it was going on. It looks like the referee rather unsportingly is going to give the goal anyway. I mean, you've got to look at Prevo there. I don't. If the first one goes in, then fair enough. But it comes back off the post and Prevo still hasn't moved for the first one. I don't know. Can he do a little bit more there? Pro probably he can, but it is Manchester City. I do have to emphasize, I am expecting to lose today. Oh, I'm not expecting to be down to 10 men after 20 minutes, though. Big Willie doesn't get sent off here. Alfonso picks up his second yellow card of the match already. Uh, he is just not good enough for the level of football that we're playing at this season. We are in desperate, desperate need of a centre-back. And I think actually we're going to take off Merlin and stick these two up front together. Um, we just, we need a centre-back. There's no, there's no way to sugarcoat it. We need to be able to go out and spend £5 million on a centre-back. The board are causing all of these problems. They are holding us back. We've got £30 million sat there in our bank account that we're not spending. We need to invest in a centre-back or the wheels are going to come off because... Yeah, we don't expect to get out of our Champions League group. It's fine if we don't. But what we don't want to do is just get absolutely knocked around by anyone who's any good forever. Because what that's the message that sends to Omar is, yeah, there's no point sticking around here at all. You're just going to be whipping boys forever. You are clearly good enough. Go and sign for someone who's any good. And then all of the... All of this stuff that we went through to get Omar here, losing Big Willie when we didn't need to, we chose to... If Omar then walks away at the end of this season because we finished 12th and got knocked out of the Champions League in the group stage, it doesn't really matter if he goes for 40, 50 million at that point. We're in a worse spot then than we were two years ago because we're then a lower mid-table league on side with no European football, no big willy and no Omar. And that's, that's not a situation we want to be stuck in. The board are... Ooh, I've never, I've never been more cross. I have been more cross with boards in the past. I've, I've resigned from jobs because I've been cross with the board in the past. But I am, I, I need to have it out with them. I've talked a lot in this series about interaction between manager and board, leaving a little to be desired in Football Manager. And this is another example of it. I need to be able to sit down with the board, and I know, I mean, this is going to take some quite advanced artificial intelligence. You can't just be picking options from a list to be able to have the kind of interaction that I want. So we're probably a little while away from it in Football Manager. But I want to be able to explain to them the situation. Look at all the money we've got. I can give you even more money if you give me the one player that I need. I need a defender. Because at the moment, I'm playing a bunch of jokers there who they can just about get away with League 1. They cannot cope with these, these kind of players. They couldn't cope with Paris Saint-Germain. They can't cope with Manchester City. And we're just getting thumped again because of it. And I, I, the thing is, I'm going on this big, long rant. I know what the board reaction would be. Don't worry about it. Getting into the Champions League was a bonus. We're, we're more concerned with uh, staying financially solvent. Um. We're happy with being a lower mid-table league and team forevermore. Look where we were 10 years ago. We've got £30 million in the bank and we're not in a relegation battle. We are happy. Doesn't matter. We'll we'll lose 6 nil every week if we can keep £30 million in the bank and not get relegated. Please and thank you. And I do kind of get it, but... I'm an ambitious manager and I don't like losing. And we're losing a lot at the moment. We just made a few changes. Omar has come off. We're going to give Millet a chance up front, who is just, he's causing trouble as well. He's hes not been the same player this year as he was last year because he doesn't want to be here because he's frustrated that we've not strengthened the club. And I share, it's difficult for me to be angry with him because I'm just as frustrated as he is about the same things he's frustrated about. But the only thing is I'm not playing poorly as a result of it. 
or am I? We're three nil down. We lost seven one the other day. Am I underperforming because of frustration? No, I'm not. I'm brilliant at football manager. It's all the board's fault, and we'll continue to blame them for the rest of time. Uh, City are just swarming at us. It feels like they could score at any moment, and there's no danger at all of us going up the other end and grabbing a goal. We kind of knew to expect this from Manchester City, and trying to put my optimistic hat on for a moment, we have beaten AC Milan. We've drawn with Villarreal. There is a chance we're the second best team in this group. We're a long, long way away from the best team in this group, who are clearly Manchester City. But we might be the second best team in this group, which would be an outstanding performance getting into the Champions League knockout round. Even if we're the third best team in this group, I think we probably are better than Villarreal. If we are the third best team in this group, that's still Europa League football. That's a competition we might be able to win. So there are positives. It's just hard to see them when your defender's getting sent off after 25 minutes because he's just not good enough. And then you get an absolute spanking. I miss Big Willy. Oh, things just get worse and worse. This is such a moany episode today because everyone's so shattered from playing in the Champions League as well because we're playing so much football and our squad is so small. When we actually come back into Ligue 1 for games against teams, we should be able to beat Strasbourg are down in 11th place. They're a team that last year we'd have beaten comfortably. We have to rotate to such an extent that we then don't win those games either. Thomas is suspended and Guayma, Fowry, both still um, both still injured. Omar's not fully fit, but he's going to have to play because he's Omar. Kambadi's not fully fit, but he's going to have to play because Cissé is also not fully fit. Neither is Di Girolamo, Matsima, Vaquero, Richardson. This team is not an 11 that I would like to put out there on a regular basis if I could avoid it. Prevo in goal, a back four of Kambadi, Barberi, Alfonso and Frey. That is a nightmare. Jayan is going to be our defensive midfield player. That's also a nightmare. And then Lepanen and Merlin in midfield. Mille comes back in. Matombo, the backup right back we brought in last year and has been on the transfer list all year, is playing on the right wing. And Afkir Omar up front. There are no more players in this squad. I mean, the one would be Benamara. I know you lot are probably screaming to play him, but he's not as good as the ones that we keep see consistently fail. He's on the bench today. Oh, Frey can only play the first half as well, so we're going to have to bring Cissé on at half-time, swap uh, Kambadi over to the right-hand side, and or I guess Matombo could drop back there, and Digi Alana could come on. That's, an, that's another option. We've got options, at least. It's lovely to have options. Love to have the option to sign a player board, if you're listening. That's a lovely ball from Merlin. And Mille trying to get in, but can't get his... Uh, can't get his shot past the goalkeeper. We do, however, win a corner and it's going to be Frey to take. We've missed his set-piece delivery. Uh, it's straight into the hands of the Strasbourg goalkeeper. I would really like to win this football match, please. I want to get back up into the top six. Yeah, I acknowledge we're probably not going to get back into the Champions League this year. It would be nice to be in the Europa League, though. Now we've had a taste of Europe, it would be nice to stay in Europe. And I can't help but think... If we can get into Europe of any flavour, that might be enough to convince Omar to stay for another year. I bet he's looking at Leon, currently second in the league, and just feel sick constantly, knowing that not only could he still be there, but if he was still there, he'd probably be playing for him because he's he's shown how good he is time and time and again. 12th goal of the season for him now. He's got goals against AC Milan this year. He would be in Leon's team ahead of, I think, Moussa Dembele is up, for, up front for them. Um, but as it is, he's playing for us and hopefully he'll keep on scoring and the gamble that we took in the summer will uh, be proven to pay off long term as his... I mean, all we've got to do is find the defender. If we find our new if we find our new defender, then it all becomes worth going through this little bit of temporary pain. We're just... We're, we're investing for the future. We're building. We haven't got loads of money. We haven't got, like, you know, loads of facilities loads of loads of i don't even know what i'm trying to say players money footballness we haven't got loads of football we've just gotta we've got to take it slow and steady and we can't bring in those lovely eastern european and south american players that are so cheap and so good <laughs> people have been saying in the comments 
uh, I mean, there seems to be a bit of a war in the comments at the moment between the people who want me to drop the rule entirely and the people who understand that that rule is what's making this say so interesting. It's why we're all still so engaged with it because it's so much harder than a typical save. So I'm definitely not dropping the rule. I am tempted to allow players who could become homegrown at Tour to come in, i.e. you can sign any nationality of players as long as they're under 18, um, similar to what we did with the homegrown save a year or two back, because they will then eventually become homegrown at club. I don't know. What are your thoughts on if we add that? And we might have to do that as a poll on the community page because I don't want to make things too easy. But at the same time, I can't find a French defender in our close to our price range who is close to good enough to play for us. Such a thing doesn't seem to exist. If I could bring in an 18-year-old who might be that player in a year or two, I feel like that doesn't make it too easy. But it does give us a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel at the moment. I've got like Dio Upamecano, who I'm scouting, knowing full well he's in his 30s and will cost us 30 or 40 million pounds to bring in in his 30s. And it doesn't seem to be... There's that level, the French international level, and then there's the level that the likes of Big Willy are at, who we can't get him back. And then there's Alfonso, who's not even French. We've just signed him on loan from a French club. Ah, give me a defender. I know I've got Ben Amara. I also know I was supposed to take Frey off, wasn't I? Um, so we should probably do that now, even though he's been the best player on the pitch. We're going to drop Matombo back there and we're going to bring De Girolamo on to be our playmaker on that side, which means Jayen can actually just go to be a normal defensive midfielder now rather than trying to get him doing the playmaking. Omar picked up a knock early on as well. So we're going to stick Millet up front, bring Samuel on for him. And then we're just going to try and freshen things up as best we can throughout the team. Vaquero can come on there. Uh, Matt Seema. You know what? Ben Amara will come on for Barberi. Um, and then we'll bring on Cissé for Kambedi. Matt Seema can continue to... Uh, I mean, he's our best defender. and We've left him on the bench there. If we concede goals now, it's our own fault. That's not my fault. The changes haven't even gone through. That one I'm not at fault for. Oh. <sighs> This is a team we should be beating, but look at the 11 we've had to put out there. Right, now we're going to demand more. Now Ben Amara is on. I would much prefer that to be Matt Seema. Now I've done that for you lot. I'm showing off for the cameras and I shouldn't. I know it never works out well for me. Can we please have a winner? Because we have been comfortably the better team. That's the other frustrating thing. These games we're not winning. We're still the better team in them. I know the good times are coming again. Because we're still playing well. We're just being punished at the moment. We're paying our dues. So when we do turn into world beaters, it'll feel all the more satisfying because we went through this together as a group. Emmanuel Gas hoping for further transfers. You're telling me, Emmanuel. You're, we're singing from the same hymn sheet there. Yes, we need more players. Please, Board, I ask you again, give me some money. Where are they? Give me some... No, just give me some... Give, give, me, some, give me some money. Give me some money. Ah! Right. Tomorrow... What a month that has been. Tomorrow, we're not... I'm not going to show you Man City again. Can't cope with it. It'll either be Milan or Villarreal, depending on what, how the group is looking. Um, it might well be Milan... We haven't shown you Milan yet, um, especially if you've got the chance to qualify against Milan. Um, failing that, it might be Villarreal as we're trying to cling on to a Europa League spot. We'll see how we go. If you have enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.